So indexes make your database look up faster and we typically create index on secondary attributes and things become really really interesting when your database is sharded and partitioned. Right? For example, when you have a large volume of data and one node is not able to handle the load, what you do? You shard the database. You partition the data and you place it across multiple data nodes. Right? Now let's take a practical example to understand how indexing work in case of a distributed data store. Now say you have a blogs database in which you are holding a large number of blogs. Let's say you're building a medium like application in which there are tons and tons of blogs that are published. Now what would happen given the large volume of data, one node will not be able to handle the load, which means we would have to create multiple partitions of data and place them across multiple shards. And for us to do that, we would need to pick a partition key on basis of which we would be splitting the data. So let's say we pick a partition key as author ID, right? So given a blog object, and an author ID, we would be determining which of the three nodes is most capable of handling it using let's say a hash function. So we take the author ID, pass it through the hash function. We know which database would that key reside in and we'd go to the database and place the data, right? This is a classic way to handle a uh, hash based partitioning. You can go for range based consistent hashing, pick your favorite implementation there. But things become really interesting when we are looking for something specific. Let's say I want to get that given a user ID, get all the blogs from it. If I want to fire this query, given a user ID, get me all the blogs of a particular user, your flow would be really easy that given a user ID, given a user ID, I would be figuring out which data node would the, or which data shard would the data would the data be present for that because my partitioning key is author id given a user id that is the author id i would pass it through the hash function and whatever it spits out i would go to that node fire a query select start from this table where author id is equal to this i would get all the blocks listed for that user and send it back and it's a pretty straightforward query that would work like a charm this worked really well because we were querying on the partitioning key itself but now let's take another example. Let's say what we are looking for is we are not looking for to get uh, the blogs for a particular user, but let's say we are looking for something much more. Let's say every blog has a category. Let's say category could be a topic that to which the blog belongs to. Let's say MySQL, Nginx, Go, Python, whatnot. Now what we want to query is get all the blogs that are that belong to a particular category. Let's say MySQL category. So let's say I take concrete example and say I have two data shards in which I have four blog items distributed two cross two. So let's say I have two blogs listed over here. So user ID one wrote a blog with ID one belonging to category MySQL with some title and somebody. So because U1 passed through the hash function spits out one, I would put it to one. Similarly, U1 wrote another blog with ID nine on go topic with some title and body. It also resides to shard one. Why? Because user ID, because U1, U1. Now let's say U3 wrote two blocks, one on Nginx, one on MySQL goes to shard two because U3 passed through the hash function spits out two. I would put it over here. Right? Now given this, the ninth solution for us to get all the blocks tagged for a particular category, let's say MySQL. Now here we can clearly see that the block tagged with MySQL is not present on one node. It's present on both the nodes, shard one and shard two. Now what would happen when the request hits the database proxy, it would need to fan out the request to all the nodes on each of the node fire that query, get the response, merge the response and send it back and send it back to the user. Right. Now here for every query like this, get all the blocks tagged for a particular category. I would have to fan out my request across all the database shards, combine the results and send it back to the user. Now this obviously while even while explaining it felt really slow, it is really slow and there are a bunch of risks in what risk number one, what if one of the shard is overburdened? So you made the request, the request went to both the shards in parallel, but one of the shard is slow, which means although one shard responded quickly, you have to wait for the second shard to respond before you can emit the response to the user. So if one shard is slow, it affects the user experience. Worst, what if one shard is dead? Either you wait until the timeout happens or you send incomplete result. That is another risk. Third is when you, and given that you might be paginating on this 
you are firing query on this both data nodes or both the shards getting the results there is a huge amount of data transferred over here which is eventually getting either filtered out or paginated and whatnot before it is sent to the user so this is also expensive so given this there has to be a better way there has to be a better way to index the data which is where we get introduced to the concept of global secondary indexes so what do we do given that our query is for a particular category give me all the blocks that belong to it what do we need to do is we need to maintain a separate index a global index for the secondary attribute category somewhere now this is what most database abstract it for you like for example dynamodb calls it global secondary index and used to and it is like a secondary table that you have but that's the whole idea so what do you do you create a global secondary index which holds your index but it is partitioned by the secondary attribute that you want to query on for example category is that attribute in this case so what do we do is we create an index which is which can be sharded internally that's not a problem right but it is partitioned by the category attribute of it so all the post that belongs to let's say mysql and nginx pass through the hash function spits out the same value so all mysql post will come to shard 3 and all go post will go to shard 4 for example now here i have drawn this as separate shard but that's not necessarily that these are separate set of machines it could co-reside with your existing data node it totally depends on the implementation this for simplicity i've drawn it as separate cluster for that you, don't, you might not need to do it because the database is abstracting these things out for you. It can decide to co-locate the data on the data nodes. It's just store it as a separate B plus tree on the disk or however it wants to do it. But the idea is logical separation is very clear on where your global secondary index resides and where your data resides. It's a logical separation, not a physical separation. Right? Okay. Now, given that we are having this data stored this way if we are looking for that hey given a category give me all the blocks that belong to it i would directly fire query to this global secondary index because this data is already partitioned by the category that i'm looking for so if i want to look for all the blocks that belong to category mysql i can just fire a query select star from block category gsi or global secondary index where category is equal to mysql when the request goes, I could fire a request to this node because I know MySQL would be present over here, passing to the hash function, I would know the shard ID. I would go there, fire the query, get the blog ID, get the data from here and respond back. Right? So this is how simple it becomes. So what we did is from the shard, from the data shard that we had, we created a global secondary index on an attribute on which we wanted to query. And on this index, we are firing the query that select star from block circuit, block category GSI where category is equal to MySQL. Now here, again, I wrote a SQL query. It depends on the database on what it exposes. I just made it readable. Right? Now this query, if you look carefully, because the global secondary index is actually partitioned by the category, the query needs to only go to one instance, get the blog IDs, then go to data shard, read the actual object and send it back to the user. So you don't need to go and query multiple shards for this. So you'd literally fire one query, get the ID, go to another data or place where you get the block details and all, combine the result and send it back. It just makes your life really easy and your query really efficient. Right? Now, this is where you have multiple implementations. First is either your global secondary index can just store the reference of the primary key that you have. So for example, if I'm creating a global secondary index on category, I can choose to store the category and the row ID or the blog ID that you have, right? Or I can choose to store the entire blog object being stored over there. So again, when you have multiple choices, you evaluate both of them and database can choose to implement it either one, like either one of these ways. So let's say we just store primary key. We just store primary key in the index. When the request comes to DB proxy, DB proxy will go to first the index shards, get the blog IDs, then go to corresponding data shards for the objects that you want, get the blog details and send it back to the user. So no unnecessarily fetching of data from the data shards. You are only fetching the data that you require from the data shards. And that's really nice. Right? That's really efficient. 
second is if we want if we choose to store all the attributes in global secondary index for a particular row for example which means the entire document is re-indexed it's repartitioned and indexed there so which means here you don't not only have the blog id but the entire blog object in that case, request comes over here. You go over here, get the data, so immediately send it back to the user. So no need to look up to data shard because your entire document is residing in the global secondary index itself. Right? Both of these options are available. If you choose DynamoDB to like DynamoDB implements this, you can take that as a configuration when you are creating a global secondary index. Right? Okay. Now here we see a classic trade-off that if we just store primary key reference, which means you have to do one lookup on index shards. And then depending on the documents that you received for those corresponding primary key, you go to the data shards, read, read those corresponding documents and send it back to the user. Right? So you're doing multiple lookups there. But if you store all the attributes in GSI, which means the entire document in GSI, you are bloating up the index size, but then you are, you are reducing a lookup. Right? It's a classic space versus trying trade-off that you may want to go with over here. But another, another challenge that comes in, is you need to keep the GSIs in sync when the main data is manipulated. So which means let's say any update that has happened, which updates a particular document, you have to update the index as well. And this needs to be done synchronously because most databases do offer strong consistency with indexes. Now that becomes another problem that if you have large number of GSIs, then your updates and your writes would take a hit. It would become really expensive because now you have to update not just in the main data shard, but along with your index shards that you have. Right? which is why global secondary indexes are expensive to manage and maintain which is why a lot of databases actually limit the maximum number of GSIs you can create. They don't allow you to create any number of GSIs you want. They basically restrict the number of GSIs that you can create on that. Typically 5 to 7 is a sweet spot there but it totally you can create a database tomorrow that allows more GSIs than that and you can do it eventually if you want to like make it eventually consistent if you want to. Right? But this is about global secondary indexes. Right? DynamoDB is a very, has a very famous implementation. You pick any distributed database in the world. If it, it would have a flavor of GSIs somewhere in its internal implementation. Right? Because that's what would make, like, by co-locating the data at one place, you are making your queries efficient. It's a very standard practice out there. Right? Now, what is opposite of global secondary index? It's local secondary index. So what if we want to query? that give me all the blogs for a particular category from a particular author. What if this is the only type of query we would have? We would never hypothetically assume that we would never be firing a query that give me all the blogs for a particular category, but we would also like, sorry, we would always be querying that for a particular category, for a particular user, give me all the blogs. So in that case, given that, our query actually contains the partition key. What we can create is, we can create a local secondary index rather than a global secondary index. So here, if your partition key is always going to be part of your query, in that case, you do not need to create a global secondary index, but you can create a local secondary index. And this local secondary index would be localized to a particular shard. So given that in shard one, you had all the documents of user U1, which is all the blocks of user U1, you can create a local index out of it on a local B plus tree. And this index is good enough for you to answer your query that for a particular user, for a particular category, give me all the blocks. Right? It would be answered from the single node itself. No need to fan out your request and get the response back. Right? And this is an advantage that you get. So depending on your query pattern, depending on the query clause that you would be firing, you need to decide if you need a local secondary index for this or a global secondary index for this. By default, any and every distributed database in the world would have a flavor of this either explicitly exposed to the to us, the consumer of the database, or it would be implicitly implemented by the database. Right? So depending on the database you are picking, go through the documentation and figure it out. But if you look carefully, the local secondary index, it being local, what it does, it is easy to ensure strong consistency for that because your writes are going to the same instance where your index is placed. So you can have a very strong consistent implementation over here. The response will always come from a single node, no need to do fan out. 
right? But you are limited by the local chart. So when you have, let's say you are having a local secondary index on category, you would never be able to fire an efficient query that given a category, give me all the blogs for that. You would always be firing given a category and the user give me all the blogs. So that is a limitation of it. But if your query is always going to be with respect to a partition key, local secondary index gives you a really good boost rather than creating a global secondary index for that. Right? So this is what I wanted to cover as part of indexes. This is a very fundamental concept of any distributed database in the world. Either they're explicitly exposing it or implicitly managing it. Right? Either way, pick up every database, go through internal software, it's a fascinating domain and try to implement this one. It's a really easy piece to implement. So if you find time, go ahead and prototype this thing. It's quite fun to be honest. Right? And if you're interested in going deeper into how you create an index index, how index is created using a B plus tree, I already have a video on it. I link it in the I card and in the description down below. So feel free to check that out. And yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amazing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.